Um, hi everyone, welcome back to Historically Speaking, an online YouTube history channel focused on the history of various institutions and professionals, how history intersects with education and culture and the world around us. I'm Karen Yang, host of Historically Speaking. Uh, today we have Dr. Sadaf Jaffer, um, sorry if I mispronounced anything, feel free to pronounce it again, um, who was an assemblywoman representing New Jersey's 16th legislative district. Um, as assemblywoman, uh, Dr. Jaffer uses her local expertise to work to amplify the voices of LD16 residents, especially underrepresented communities. Uh, she's the first Asian American woman and the first Muslim American to be sworn into New Jersey General Assembly. She's also the former mayor of Montgomery Township uh, and currently teaches at Princeton University. Um, and in January of 2019, she became the first South Asian woman to serve as mayor of a municipality in New Jersey and the first Muslim woman to serve as mayor of a municipality in the United States. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add to your bio or um, just anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that was great. Glad to be here. Of course. Thank you so much. Um, I think like something that I found really just kind of awe-inspiring, kind of really interesting about your position um, was number one, I live very, very close by. So, you know, it's kind of really cool to see a lot of this history making literally happen in the neighborhood or in the neighborhood of New Jersey, I guess. Um, so I wanted to ask kind of about um, this kind of really unique position you play as being the first Muslim woman and the first South Asian woman to serve as mayor. Um, so what kind of, I guess, challenges have you faced with that? And what kind of um, joys do you, I guess, derive from that as well? Sure. So I would say, you know, being the child of immigrants, I didn't really know a lot of people who were involved in politics. We were very well informed about politics. We used to listen to um, NPR and, you know, my parents always read the newspaper and would talk to us about different things. But I didn't know people who were actually directly involved as elected officials. And I think that that was one of the reasons why I wanted to run was to show people from different communities that you do have just as much of a right to run for local office and just as much of an ability to win those seats and to be able to represent your community. Um, so I would say when I initially started getting involved, I didn't think so much about, you know, would I be the first one? Um, and then when it happened, it was a little bit of a shock, but I saw how important it was for other people to see that representation and maybe see elected office and political engagement as something that they could participate in. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I was mayor, I, you know, went to as many different local and community events as I could. And then when it came to running for the assembly as well, I was very surprised actually to learn that there had never been an Asian American woman in the New Jersey legislature, especially considering that we have about 11% of our population is Asian American. So mm -hmm. that really motivated me um, to try to, to win mm -hmm. that seat and uh, to represent the needs of my district, but also uh, Asian American and Muslim communities throughout the state of New Jersey. For sure. I think that is... Um... That's a really great kind of way to put it where you don't necessarily go about saying like, oh, like, let me smash the stereotype or smash this barrier, I guess, but it just kind of happens along the way. And when you're trying to represent people and really create like an authentic audience and really cater to everybody for sure. Um, I guess like I wanted to ask about kind of that political history or kind of like how did you end up, I guess, where you are today? Um, so if you want to just talk about like kind of how you got started in politics, um, feel free to do so with that. Sure. So I, uh, you know, was always interested in politics and policy and government. And I went to the School of Foreign Service at Georgetown for college. And I thought that I was going to go into diplomacy. And I did actually intern with the State Department and I interned with the Marine Corps in college. Um, but then I became very interested in my studies and I ended up pursuing, well, first living in India for two years and then pursuing a PhD in uh, South Asian studies and Islamic studies. And then when I, um, you know, ended up in the Princeton area, I started getting more involved in advocacy for, you know, my congressperson. And then I realized that 
I probably was not going to change his mind. <laughs> and um, it would be better for people who shared my values and my background to actually be in those positions. So that was the first time that I thought about running for office. And, um, you know, before that, I had campaigned for President Obama's election and reelection campaigns. Um, but I had been very focused on presidential level politics, like many people are. Mm -hmm. um, but then I realized the significance of Congress. And so I was actually campaigning for someone who was running for Congress when I was asked to run for local office in my town. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, the incumbents were running unopposed. At that time, it was an all Republican local government. And I was running and I would be running as a Democrat. So I decided to give it a try. I ran as a write-in in 2016 and I did not win my seat. But in 2017, I won. And I was the first Democrat and only one in several years. And so that was a huge uh, victory and change. And then we actually managed to flip the town to a Democratic majority. I became the mayor. I served as mayor for two terms. And then when the seat in the assembly opened up, again, lots of members of the community uh, asked me to consider running. And so I did. And that's how I got to where I am today. That's so cool. I also um really resonated kind of with the idea of like, oh, everyone's a kind of, you know, the presidential kind of election is always a huge like, oh, 2024, you know, everyone get out there and vote. But as you said, and as you have shown throughout your career, it's that kind of the local government has also played a really important role in making sure that, you know, certain perspectives are represented um, and that, you know, people have you know, as much say in their government as, you know, as their president, which is all, of course, really important. Um, I guess I wanted to ask you about kind of the unique uh, or the unique perspective that you may bring about like local governments or local assemblies. Um, what do you think are those impacts um, compared to maybe, say, the president or kind of how do these two systems kind of impact citizens in a different way or, yeah. Sure. So I'll start with um, my priorities in the legislature. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, being a younger woman of color, um, definitely there are certain things that I can bring in perspectives and priorities. So one of my priorities has been women's health. And so I've been, you know, either a co-sponsor or a um, you know, one of the price prime sponsors, or I've introduced legislation related to women's health and investing in, you know, pelvic floor re rehabilitation, education, programming, uh, reproductive rights. So that's been one of my focus areas. Another area that's very important to me is mental health. And so I've supported a number of bills and introduced a bill, for example, on the College Mental Health Services Act. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that and then in terms of, you know, diverse communities and specifically the Asian American community, I have a data disaggregation bill that I've supported to make sure that we understand the complexities within the Asian American community as in terms of, you know, so we can figure out disparities and, and where we need to invest in healthcare, education, or economic resources. Also, um, uh, translation uh, legislation to make sure that we're trying to get important documents translated into the top mm -hmm. uh, most popular languages in New Jersey. So those are some of the things that I've worked on in the legislature. Um, in local government, I would say, you know, some of the things that really stood out to me were during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I was mayor in 2020, and I found out that some of the undocumented members of the community were afraid to go to the food pantry and to get food aid. And so the staff at the township figured out a way to deliver that food aid to them. Mm -hmm. And when I raised this with some other mayors, I was met with uh, kind of like incredulous comments like, oh, I haven't heard that. And how come you're the only one who's heard this? And why would they be afraid? And I realized that in that conversation, I was the only child of immigrants, um, mm -hmm. you know, the only woman of color. And so perhaps those communities would feel more comfortable expressing that need to me. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, we know that there was a rise in domestic violence uh, over the course of the pandemic. And so mm -hmm. I had women from different racial and ethnic backgrounds reach out to me 
and let me know that they were experiencing domestic violence. And I would try to connect them with the resources that they would be helpful. And then I also, you know, emphasized in all of our communications that we should highlight resources for those who might be experiencing domestic violence. And again, Mm -hmm. I would ask myself, you know, if I was a man in this position, would those women have felt comfortable letting me Mm -hmm. know what they were experiencing? Maybe, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that really goes to show that we government is better served having the diversity of the population reflected in its elected officials, because Mm -hmm. people will just naturally feel an inclination to connect with those that they share something with Mm -hmm. and let them know what they need. Mm -hmm. That is really true. I think um, you hear so often about like in culture, um, it's like, oh, I see like a superhero who looks like me. Um, I think that reflects in um, you know, real life and also in the government as well, for sure. And seeing that, oh, you know, like, I feel like a lot of people definitely thought that, you know, Barack Obama being the first African-American uh, president definitely found that sort of like relatability and found that sort of like, oh, America's kind of, you know, changing in one certain direction. Um, And yeah, I think that happens like on a widespread kind of um basis as well, for sure. Um, I wanted to ask kind of, um, this question might be very conceptual, um, but kind of what does democracy to you, I guess, look like on a day-to-day basis? Because I think we all have this like notion of, you know, democracy being, oh, like I go and cast my ballot and I go in to make sure that, you know, there's like no corruption happening. Um, but I'm sure like on another perspective, it looks um, maybe a little bit different, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. I really like this question. So kudos to you for asking it. I think that um, democracy is about being governed in an equitable manner by our peers uh, with a clear and transparent process for electing our leaders. Mm -hmm. And so I do think it's important that we think about democracy because, you know, I think that there is a lot of cynicism about politics and government and Mm -hmm. It's not that it's completely undeserved, but I don't think that we also all should brush with broad strokes. There mm-hmm. might be some people who are in positions for you know their own motives, but I would say the vast majority of elected officials really want to do what's best for their constituents, for the public. And um, if we value democracy, then we also should value elected officials. And mm-hmm. yes, we should hold them accountable if they do something wrong, or we should make very clear what we expect from, from them, from us. Um, mm-hmm. But we also shouldn't just write off the whole thing. Um, because if we do that, then then we really are letting go of our power. Mm-hmm. Because in a democracy, each one of us has an equal vote. Each one mm-hmm. of us, no matter what background we're from, whether we're wealthy or not wealthy, whether we're from, you know, um, a privileged community or not, all of our votes count. And that's how we have an opportunity to participate in our in our political system. So mm-hmm. I think democracy is something very valuable. It's been fought for and um, we should honor that those struggles by participating and by making the best of it that we can. Mm-hmm. Um, I know sometimes we see things and we feel disappointed and that certainly can happen with me as well. Um, But one of the things that I often remind myself is that human beings are flawed. You Mm -hmm. know, our institutions are going to have their flaws as well. But that doesn't mean that we can't keep working to improve. And I think that that is what we're all doing. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I think that, um, just like you said, um, I think, yeah, we definitely look at, you know, government officials, I think, in this current climate with a bit of like, oh, yeah, like, at least, um, you know, in my generation, I feel like we're kind of looking like, oh, like, is this government really serving us? Like, why do we have this president who's like, you know, seems like a gajillion years older than us or something like that? Um, But I definitely agree that, you know, we place a certain level of trust. And I feel like that trust should be, you know, wholeheartedly handed over as long as it's, you know, used correctly. Um, And yeah, it seems kind of just to be like that kind of exchange of you hear me and I work for you and you got my support. And you know, as long as that exchange is happening in the right manner, it's like, yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> um, I wanted to also ask, um, being kind of uh from the Gen Z generation, I guess, um, 
that how do you think that you know younger people can kind of get involved with politics maybe on a more local level or on like a state level you know like definitely a lot of people I think think of starting movements but they're like I don't know how to go national um um so I guess like what is your kind of outlook on more local kind of movements or ideas absolutely so I think um you know, it can seem overwhelming. Like there's so many different advocacy issues or so many different organizations. Um, my recommendation would be to pick a couple and mm -hmm. just dedicate some time every week to those causes, whether it's like an advocacy issue that you care about, whether it's reproductive rights or gun safety, um, or whether it's getting involved with the political party. I think, um, you know, political parties are dynamic. They mm -hmm. are really change with their membership and what the demands of those who actually participate are. So I think it's really good to get involved with a political party and to maybe work on the campaign of a candidate that you believe in, mm -hmm. um, because that's how you're going to kind of learn how, how things work, how people get on the ballot. Um, I think young people really ought to consider maybe running for office at some point. It doesn't have to be something you do for the rest of your life or, you know, you can still have other professional goals, but I think it's good to think about ways to serve your community in an elected capacity or to support elected officials because that's where the decisions are being made in terms of resource allocation and priorities. Um, so I do think getting involved in the political process and definitely as soon as you can to register and to vote in every single election um, mm -hmm. because everyone pays attention to those people who vote. And frankly, you know, there is this reputation that younger people don't vote or older people do. And so if you want to win your election, then who do you think people are going to cater to? Mm -hmm. I've been, you know, talking about how, especially in last year's election, younger voters really made a huge difference. And I think people are paying attention to that. So mm -hmm. I would say if you want, you know, your demographic, your age group, you know, to be paid attention to, then participate, because that's when people are really going to pay attention. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like, yeah, for sure. Engaging in the system um, really creates some of that change, 100%. Um, I wanted to close our interview with kind of more of a fun question, I guess. Um, I think, you know, from what you've described, you do a lot of really important work. Um, and, you know, there's so many different multitudes and fa uh, kind of facets of that work. Um, what do you think is the most rewarding part of your job? Or what is something that you really, like, enjoy seeing uh, kind of come into fruition? I think it's being able to really shape policy and to meet with constituent groups that say, yes, this is important to us. Um, I'll give an example that I have legislation right now um, that was authored by the Senate sponsor, Andrews Wicker, and I've introduced it in the assembly, which is meant to make sure that the software and algorithms that are used in hiring practices are equitable and that they're not you know, discriminating against any group. Mm -hmm. And um, that is very important. I've he heard from a lot of young people that there are worries about the ways technology could be used to discriminate. Mm -hmm. And so you know, it's heartening to hear from people that we are addressing their concerns. And you know, as I said, it's a dynamic environment. Things are constantly changing. But the effort is being put in to make sure that we keep our society as equitable as possible, that we provide people with the resources they need. Um, and I think that that is very powerful for me. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think, you know, with the rise of like AI and like chat GPT or whatever, it always seems to be something new every week. Um, yeah, I think that is definitely really important. And, you know, um, as you know, we increasingly kind of take new technology and use it. Um, yeah, I agree. It's always important to make sure that everything is as equitable as possible, for sure. Um, I want to thank you so much again for uh, speaking with me. I know you're super busy doing all sorts of really, really awesome work. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to share or any like links you'd like to give me or something like that? Sure. You know, anyone is welcome to follow my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, South F. Daffer and Jay. Um, I have a website as well. Um, but I think the most important thing I would say is just get involved in your local community. Uh, think about running for office. Think about supporting a candidate. Think about joining a political party and participating because we need youth voices. I'm a big advocate for that. 
Um, and I'm always, you know, so proud when I, when I get to work with young people and there's lots of opportunities for you to participate. Mm -hmm. For sure. Thank you so much again. And, um, yeah, thank you. It's great to talk to you. Um, for everyone watching at home, thank you so much. And I will see you all next time.